Unit 5, Monitoring Construction Related Project Activities in the Workplace. Uh, average size unit this one, not over large, 8 credits. Um, 7 learning outcomes, 7 small section. So this unit is all about program management. Ensuring planned a planned timely outcome with procedures in place to overcome program threats such as lack of plants, labour materials and even health and safety issues. I often like to say change is here to stay and key to this unit is being able to evidence the managerial ability, your managerial ability, to manage unexpected change and to ensure a smooth construction operation which can only be achieved if a manager knows what, how, when and why all construction tasks are taking place and to be able to sequentially organise all operations and to integrate certain packages to run concurrently when necessary. Well, sounds like a lot. Let's break it down into the learning outcomes. It's not as difficult as you think. The learning outcomes are as follows. 1. Give adequate notice to all the people who will be affected about when work will start, how long will it take and when it will finish and confirm all dates in writing. Product information, that is what you do, which is suitable for this unit, are meeting minutes, emails, program confirmation, labour and material and plant schedules. Two, second learning outcome. Communicate and agree a program and method with people who will be doing the work that integrates operations. Again, product information, uh, product evidence, work and project programs, method statements and method statement um, briefing records. Third learning outcome. Identify, record and obtain information requirements before work starts. Excuse me. <coughs> so what we're talking about here is one of our old friends, the construction phase health and safety plan. Drawings, scheme of works, surveys, manufacturer's recommendations and RAMs. Now we're getting into this MVQ now and we're into, into a few units if you're sequentially starting from number one upwards. And in this unit, uh, this learning outcome, the only new piece of information that I can see there that's required is surveys and manufacturers recommendations. The others, the construction phase health and safety plan, drawings and risk assessments and method statements, you should already have good examples of those uh, referenced that you could use again from previous units. Number four, fourth learning outcome. Organise attendance for subcontractors in accordance with project and contractual agreements. So good evidence, product evidence here are pre-start meetings, pre-start meeting minutes, subcontractor or a subcontractor contract and perhaps labour allocation meeting minutes. Number five, plan and obtain sufficient resources of the appropriate type which will meet the project requirements and time scales. Material schedules, plant schedules, labour schedules, bill of quads. If you've got a copy of these indexed as part of your um, evidence requirements, use them again and again. If you haven't, pop them in because you will use them again and again and again. Number six, organize and control the site and resources so that conditions are safe. The site is tidy and creates a favorable image of the organization, its, product, its products, its services and the project. What we could use here are health, health and safety report project meeting minutes, and a site safety plan. Those three will adequately evidence this learning outcome. And number seven, 
develop contingency plans to meet special requirements to minimise disruptions to those likely to be affected by the works programme. For me, this screams of a micro programme or a site stroke project meeting minutes. And again, a gentle reminder. Review all learning outcomes of the unit before commencing and plan which pieces of evidence best evidence your involvement in each learning outcome. Select the best pieces of evidence that can be used on several occasions. For instance, as mentioned previously, you might you ought to include a construction phase health and safety plan. And this piece of evidence can be referenced, perhaps if you've evidenced it as number 13. But when quoting the evidence, give evidence number 13 and then just put the page number against the evidence number. This would lead the assessor straight to the piece of information that he needs to have to cross out that piece of the learning outcome which says achieved. And again a gentle reminder, review all learning outcomes with regards to your candidate statements, pencil in a couple of bullet points to all of your, all of the whole, so the whole of your unit is planned prior to starting. This is the fast track way. If you are using our guidance sequentially and working from one upwards, then by now you'll be getting into the rhythm of completing this MVQ.